MTP 201 Unit 5 Different Styles of Ties In the previous units we learned about the historical background Colored Perspective of Tie and Dye After learning in brief about different dyes and materials required for tie and dye, we had also learnt about the process of tie and dye. In this unit we will be learning about different methods of tying the fabric. The objectives of today's class are after going through this lesson you will be able to know about different styles of tying methods used for tie and dyeing techniques. Execution of these ties. Production. Tying is an important process in tie and dye. A number of patterns can be created with the help of various tying patterns. Creation of designs using different ways of tying the fabric include marbling, twisting, coiling, knotting, binding, folding, sewing, etc. of the fabric and tying objects in the fabric. All these will be briefly described in this section. Styles of tying the different types of tie can be divided into texture, that's marbling method, binding, knotting, folding. sewing or tree tick using cords and ropes to produce patterns and textures pleated oval ruching and chevron spiral folding method Texture Marbling method They are stimulating and rewarding ways of providing to the beginner that when cloth is bunched up closely and bound with thread or string before being dyed uneven dyeing and in some parts complete resistance to the dye is caused Little or no skill is required for this exercise and the results are largely beautiful. It is a valuable means of finding out the different effects produced when a second or third color is dyed over the first. The irregular cloud-like texture which is dyed on the cloth by marbling technique can be quite attractive without further additions but it provides a rich and unusual background for prints, stencils, embroidery etc. After the sample has been marbled it can be tied up again into a definite design and dyed a darker or contrasting color so that in the resist 
areas the marble texture shows through instead of the plain white cloth for instance if large scale circles are bound up on a previously marbled background and the sample is then dyed a darker color the effect produced is one of the textured circles on the background One of the easiest and quickest ways of producing a dyed texture is to tie a length of cloth into knots. This can be tied in several ways depending on the size, shape and grain of the cloth. fine fabrics such as muslin butter muslin lawn fine cambric georgette voile silk and nylon are ideal for this technique coarse grained bulky fabric is definitely not suitable for knotting maybe operated in three ways length of cloth tied into knots a square rectangle or triangle of cloth knotted knots tied in a length of cloth to form an all over pattern a strip of fine cloth is best the wider and coarser it is the fewer the knots the most interesting texture is obtained from more and lesser knots rather than large clumsy ones binding Binding is one of the most important processes in tie and dye used either alone or as a supplement to the other methods if certain parts of the fabric are bound very tightly with thread before being dyed they will resist the dye partially or completely binding applied before the first dyeing reserves the original cloth binding applied before the second dye reserves the first color binding applied before the third dyeing reserves the second color etc linen thread are excellent for binding but cotton string cord yarn tip bast rubber rings etc can all be used cotton or thinner thread may often be used for smaller and shallower tying and for finer materials flour and water paste may be added to the bindings where necessary to help form a crisper resist to get a solid resist area with well defined sharp edges paint melted wax over the whole binding to exclude the dye completely a cold dye must be used 
it is possible to bind with waxed thread or ordinary copper thread can be treated by sliding it over a solid lump of hard wax. It is absolutely essential that the binding should remain firm and taut and that no slackening off should occur during the dyeing operation for it must keep the cloth bunched up so closely that dye cannot penetrate into the folds. Binding however well accomplished is ineffective if the fastening off is not absolutely secure. Many striking patterns and effects, especially stripes, are produced by the folding techniques combined with binding. To get the best results, this method calls for a very accurate workmanship. Generally speaking, very narrow strips should confine to the finer fabric but most kinds of materials can be used for medium to wider strips. Cotton threads are suitable for binding fine cloth but a stronger thread or string is preferable for coarse material or wider strips. A bulky tied up sample should be left longer in the dye bath that the dye can penetrate to the inner folds. There are four main categories that come under this heading. They are first simple stripes Second, an individual or edge stripe. Third, folded square. Fourth, rope tying. Now let me give you some self-check questions so that you are able to revise what we have studied just now. Name four methods of tying fabric for dyeing. I repeat the first question. Name four methods of tying fabric before dyeing. Question number two. What are the four main categories of folding methods? Question number two. What are the four main categories of folding method? If you have been able to answer these questions, let me move on. Sewing techniques or treating. The success of sewing method is entirely dependent on the ability to draw up the material into gathers so closely on the sewing thread that the dye cannot penetrate into the folds. 
It is essential, therefore, to have very strong thread that does not break halfway through the operations. And then it will remain taut. While supporting the weight of the closely gathered cloth during the process of dyeing, linen carpet thread is very suitable for this purpose. Used single or double where extra strength is needed. Creole needles size 3 to 7 are better than ordinary sewing needles as they accommodate the thick thread without undue bulk and thus avoid making permanent holes in the fabric. Medium to find fabrics are best. There is one rule that applies to all sewing methods. Always make a large knot in the thread before beginning to sew and a large knot in the thread as soon as it is taken out of the needle. This means there is a large knot at either end of the line of sewing. Never leave a loose end or thread anywhere without a knot. If the lines of sewing stretch right across the material, keep the knots at the edge. Where the pattern is small, a single thread is sufficient, but double threads is essential where there is a large area to be sewn. For instance, where a line of sewing extends right across the cloth. If a thread is not strong enough, it will snap during the pulling up and the pattern will be spoiled or lost completely. For the pulling up process, gradually slide the cloth along each thread until it is bunched into a solid mass of gathers at one end. Make sure that the knot at the end of the thread is bulky enough to hold the cloth in position. The gathered cloth will slip off the thread if the knot does not form an adequate barrier. If the tightening up process has been carried out properly, sewing threads should not be visible. The exceptions are over sewing a bulky hem or when a double row is being used. Pulling up the thread tightly and ultimate success pattern depends on a firm secure fastening of. That will not slacken in the slightest while the sample is tied. It must be able to keep the closely packed folds of cloth from bursting from the thread. Pleated Oval To obtain a dyed or resist oval leads itself to numerous interpretations. Each oval can be pleated, bound and dyed as a separate shape on a dyed or undyed ground. Second, an oval shape can be reserved on a dyed ground. Third, several individual shapes can be grouped together in any direction to form floral and leaf designs.
Fourth, the oval can be extended to form diamond and circular shapes. Or elongated to produce narrow strips suitable for depicting stems and narrow leaves. Ruching, as the name suggests, is a means of obtaining pattern by gathering fabric completely round pieces of wood or any other suitable object. Binding is added by giving stability to the gathers and to help form a richly textured resist strip. The kind of base used plays an important part in influencing this texture and determines the width of the strip. The cross section of the base whether circular, triangular or rectangular affects the pattern. Piece of wood are ideal for this purpose as the cloth slides along the smooth surface easily. Chevron Spiral Folding Method Ways of obtaining a chevron or zigzag pattern is quite different from the rope method. It provides opportunities for many rendering for the chevron scheme. There is a chance to introduce rich texturing and more variety of sizes and changes of direction. It is an ideal technique of producing background, decorating narrow strips of cloth such as calves or panels to be made up into the skirts and dresses. There are two ways of tackling the folding process but in both the cases end product is the same. A flattened spiral tube for both methods fold the cloth first of all in half lengthwise for a single chevron into four for a double chevron and so on. Pin or tack the edges. Tying method before dyeing. Tying objects into fabric before dyeing can create a variety of patterns for this different sized round shapes like the ping pong balls, rubber balls, marbles. coins pulses etc can be used now this is the second set of your self check question question number 3 what is sewing method please discuss amongst yourself Fourth, what is ruching? If you have answered these questions, let me quickly sum up what we have read today. In this unit, the different methods used in the fabric for dyeing are discussed. These include marbling, twisting and coiling, 
knotting, binding, stitching or sewing and tying objects after tying. The possible answers to self-check questions are in the first question we had asked you the techniques those for tie dyeing they are marbling, knotting, binding and folding. Actually there are many more but remember these four for the present. Question number two Simple stripes and individual or edge stripe, folded square, rope tying. Question number three, what is a sewing technique? Sewing technique is the resist consists of drawing up a thread sewn into fabric so that the folds that resist the dye results. Question number four, what is ruching? Ruching is a means of obtaining patterns by gathering fabric compactly round pieces of wood or any other suitable objects. Binding is added to give stability to the gathers and to help form a richly textured resist stripes. Terminal questions. Describe any two types of methods in details. In fact, I would like you people to carry this practically. Which one rule is applied to all sewing methods? This you could just let your mentors or share the answer with the class. Thank you.